Hello everybody, video here for you today. These are the retro no cap recaps of the Curse of Oak Island Season 6, Episodes 8 and 9, originally aired in January 2019. If you missed my recaps of previous and future episodes, there's a link to my Oak Island playlist in the upper right. Let's get into it. Do 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 do. Previously, on the Curse of Oak Island, people have been looking for an incredible treasure for 229 years. The nearly 12,000 square foot area behind the recently completed dam at Smith's Cove has begun being excavated by Billy. Marty calls attention to the water appearing from below and says it will be a cycle of digging and pumping. Charles spots this small log and Ma Marty suspects it to be part of the base of Dan Blankenship's early 1970s coffer dam. The U-shaped structure Dan found and partly excavated before a massive storm destroyed the dam is further inland than Billy is digging now. Rick tells Laird they will dig horizontally so that they don't damage the structure while trying to locate it. Gary is at the wash plant going through the spoils from Smith's Cove and finds this piece of pottery, as he says. In the research center, Laird suggests 3D modeling the possible 90-foot stone found in Halifax. Paul says they will try LIDAR. Rick, Charles, Doug, and Dan arrive at the Money Pit area to check on a new coring operation by Choice Drilling. They believe they possibly located Tunnel 6 three weeks prior. In an attempt to avoid the Money Pit flood tunnels, in 1861, a group of searchers dug shafts 6, 18 feet west of the original pit, and at 118 feet, they dug east and up to try to get to the treasure vault from underneath. One foot short of their target, the tunnel and shaft flooded. Shortly thereafter, they heard large crashes underground, leading them to believe that the cribbing from the money pit had collapsed, creating a debris field below in Tunnel 6. At the target area of the current borehole, this vertical timber is in the core from 109 feet, so Terry and Charles think they clipped an edge of the tunnel. They will dig other boreholes due east to try to track Tunnel 6. This transition shot is interesting in relation to Seasons 10 and 11. While the stone found in the bookstore basement is being LiDAR scanned in the research center, Rick, Marty, and Laird go to Lot 24 on the western side of the island to continue excavating the structure Laird said could be a filled-in shaft or tunnel in the previous episode. In the hole that is filled with water, Laird finds the base of a pot. In this clay pipe stem, he dates 1750 to 1840. Marty says the structure could be related to Samuel Ball since it's one of the lots that he owned. In Smith's Cove, Gary finds this hand forged iron spike that he dates in the 1700s. And this possible coin. They immediately take it to the research center and magnification reveals the gold color they saw before. Gary says that high-grade gold would not encrust, but low-grade mixed with other metals would. They will get it conserved to have a better chance of identifying it. In Smith's Cove, Billy uncovers this big log and timber. Rick hand digs out the end of it and sees this lightly etched Roman numeral 7. The number 7 was not reported by Dan when he partially excavated the structure in the early 1970s, so it's possible no one has seen this since the original builders. They continue uncovering the structure and soon find this deep etched Roman numeral 3. 
and this four that is a match for Dan's picture of what he found almost 50 years prior. At the beginning of episode nine, Laird has joined the team in Smith's Cove and is helping to uncover this picture's left side of the U-shaped structure. Charles uncovers Roman numerals XI, which is 11, and then XII, which is 12, right next to it. It's upside down, obviously. Terry says there seems to be clay-rich soil packed around the timbers and that it didn't happen naturally among the beach sands. It was put there on purpose. It's similar to what is found above 50 feet in the money pit area. Jack says, so maybe they dug it from the money pit and put it down here? Terry says, yes. After they finish exposing the known structure, Jack suggests that it could be the remains of a coffer dam built by original depositors to block the water while they constructed the flood tunnels. Billy will remove the soil between the arms so they can find the finger drains. Laird and Marty first get the measurements. The horizontal measurement is 65.5 feet and Marty says, I'm sure that means something. I'm sure too, Marty. The LiDAR data comes back that the LN we saw before, when rotated, becomes an AI or 1, 7. The horizontal line in the A is not visible on the stone to the naked eye. The technology does not reveal any other linear features that could be symbols or letters. Uh, but they could look into other methods that can do even more than LiDAR. Two episodes prior, Dr. Travis Taylor visited the island with his star map theory that conjectures that the constellation of Taurus is connected to various points on the island, of which three were verified, two with large boulders, and one of the points being at the location of the stone triangle south of the money pit. Another point is on Apple Island to the east. Gary and Jack asked diver Tony Sampson, who has been on the show several times before, to take them over. It appears more like an avocado or pear here, but it could have looked more like an apple when it was named. Tony takes them nearby on his boat, then the rest of the way in a raft. This shot shows how close it is to Oak Island, as you can see the Smith's Cove down. Dan Blankenship had investigated Apple Island and some of the other nearby islands, but that investigation was inconclusive. Near the GPS coordinates that a big bowler should be, they do find this one. And also those two in the distance. Jack points out that two of them are white and one is red. He says granite for these as well. Uh, Gary gets metal detector hits, mostly iron, but one non-ferrous as well. But they are only able to dig on Oak Island with their treasure trove license. They will have to get a permit to find out what these are. The team at the Money Pit can see the core of 118 to 124 feet in the borehole even before it is bagged and brought to them. Wood. Exactly the depth at which they were looking for it to confirm they are tracking the Shaft 6 tunnel. When it reaches them, they see that it is 5 feet of only wood. No soil. Gary and Jack check the spoils pile that has been washed already and find this coin, but it's modern, dated 1963. In Smith's Cove, Laird and Terry find this clay-packed wall. As far as the team knows, an undocumented structure. They suspect it's to block water. 
and beyond the wall, these stones, which could be part of the French drain system the team found two years prior. No Cap Recaps of Season 11 will debut Tuesday late nights, and I'll also continue publishing these retro No Cap Recaps of Season 6 through 8. The Seasons 1 through 5, 9, 10, and the aired episodes of Season 11 are already done. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment.